great, thank you. So welcome everybody to our State Street downtown waterfront uh, wrap meeting where we discuss the impact of homelessness in the downtown waterfront areas of Santa Barbara. I'm Landon Rank, the Associate Director with SB Action. I'm joined by my colleagues, Kai Tilly and Eric Meyer. Um, so we're gonna talk through a couple of things today. We'll just start with some general announcements. So I'm gonna share my screen. Just a few reminders about uh, well, actually, before we get to schedule, um, just start with some good news. Um, so you may have already heard, but the second uh, Dignity Moves housing project has officially opened. This is up at the former Juvenile Hall, um, and this is going to be 80 units total. Right now, I believe 40 of them are actually full, um, and they're they're uh, in the process of getting the other 40 full. But uh, half of these units are specifically dedicated to individuals with significant uh, behavioral health concerns. So the County Department of Behavioral Wellness is working with um, half of the units to address some of those needs. So this isn't a Santa Barbara city specific project. It's for the whole South County region, but um, with 80 units, uh, it's definitely going to have an impact. And especially with that behavioral health focus, we know there will be some individuals uh, from the city of Santa Barbara that are able to benefit from this project. Um, and then just a reminder, this is transitional housing that's over there. So the point of this housing is that individuals can stay for um, up to three months and sometimes longer as needed um, to help them transition into a permanent housing situation. So either way, it's good news for all of us and homelessness because it gets people off the streets and out of shelter beds. I also wanted to make sure it's on everyone's radar um, that we uh, do have our next all call wrap meeting on Monday, June 3rd at noon. And this time it's going to be in person. We're actually gonna meet at Trinity Episcopal Church. Um, and the purpose of this meeting is for our whole uh, community-wide, any, anyone from our community in the South County to join and learn about what's going on throughout the entire South County region with regard to homelessness. So anywhere from uh, Isla Vista to Carpinteria. Um, this collaborative that SB Act is hosting is specifically focused on a couple different goals, namely around addressing behavioral health challenges, um, addressing uh, vehicular homelessness and specifically like RV parking, and then uh, addressing public perceptions of homelessness. So we'll be discussing those things as well as some, the recent point in time count results. So we encourage you to join us if you're able, bring your lunch. Um, we'd love to see you at Trinity Episcopal. And then, uh, as a part of these uh, downtown wrap meetings, we're now uh, including a segment uh, to uh, have an update from the new Daytime Navigation and Workforce Development Center that's opening at 621 Chapala Street. And so Eric Meyer from SB Act is here and he's gonna share a few updates from the center. Um, and then as anyone has questions as we go, you can feel free to direct them to Eric. Yeah, thanks. So we're chugging along. Um, facility is almost ready. The locks are being installed as I speak. Um, we're going to hopefully order, order furniture tomorrow. Uh, we've hired uh, folks to work here. We've hired 13 people, all, uh, all of whom have lived experience of homelessness. And we're shooting for a end of June opening right now. So I'll keep updating you as we get closer to that date. But I'm happy to take any questions people have. I'm not seeing any at the moment, but feel free to raise any questions as we keep going. Um, and on on the related note, we do have an open house uh, where you can come and tour the center. It's also a fundraiser event, so um, it's an open house with a ticket cost. Uh, but we in invite you to join us on Wednesday, May 29th at 6:30 p.m. at the center. Uh, so you can come see what we'll be doing here, uh, how it'll benefit the community um, and support the cause. So then I'm uh, just going to throw the calendar in front of everybody with all these dates that we mentioned. Um, so uh, the Navigation Center open house is uh, two weeks from yesterday. The uh, all call meeting at Trinity Episcopal Church will be the following Monday at noon. And then our next State Street downtown waterfront wrap meeting will be uh, Thursday, June 13th. Hopefully it will not be gloomy anymore by then. I'm not gonna cross my fingers. All right, so with that, um, 
we will uh, turn it over to community members to hear questions and concerns before we actually go to our outreach providers to hear from them. So anything from the community members that we want to address? Yeah, go ahead, Rich. So we, we had two things. We had one evening where we had an incident with uh, three different people harassing Zoo employees. And uh, we tried to document that as much as possible. And we did send that along uh, in the event that any of these uh, individuals were receiving care or uh, were known uh, to any of the service providers. Uh, the other was a, another fire uh, that was started, uh, I guess, associated with, I don't know how many people were associated with the location. It would have been in the uh, northeast corner uh, of Dwight Murphy Park across the street in the uh, woods uh, close to Sycamore Creek. Uh, and that was noted uh, as employees departed one evening about 5.30 p.m. It was reported and, and, and dealt with. But that was the, the, probably the second incident that we've had in that area with a, uh, with a fire uh, on the zoo perimeter. Thank you, Rich. And when you say they were reported, I assume you mean like to city code compliance and yeah. At, well, the the fire was reported to SBPD, and um, uh, the individuals. I I just I forwarded those on to uh, your office. So, uh, but we're we're trying to keep track of it. In the case of individuals, we're trying to do the best we can to identify them. Uh, simply because if they are uh, known to any of the service providers, then there's a possibility of being able to deal with that directly with them. And I can speak to this quickly, Landon. Um, I was uh, also in, in contact with Matt, who I believe is the security manager for the yeah. zoo. Um, he reached out to me. That has been a very high priority area for us, as well as the CAT team. Um, We've worked really hard to clear a lot of the encampments, um, but we are still dealing a lot with just individuals uh, returning, having fires in that area, um, cooking, just sort of really utilizing that area underneath the 101 bridge. Um, so it, it definitely is on our radar. Um, we're going to it on a daily basis, and I know the CAT team has it as a very high priority as well. So um, we're, we're definitely have that one on the radar and, and are, are working to kind of to nip it in the bud as best we can. Thank you, Andrew. We'll talk a little later too, just about some of the waterfront outreach and some of the recent staffing changes too. Any other questions from the community? All right. I mentioned we do have a smaller attendance today. I think some of that is because of the there's a continuum of care uh, meeting happening. Um, and so we have some of our service providers are at that meeting right now. So they may join us a little late. But um, Joel, could I go to you just to share? Because I think the East Side Wrap heard some of the um, updates from PATH uh, recently, um, but I don't know that it's been shared at this wrap. Oh, uh, updates as far as the presentation we Primarily did? Primarily. Or, uh, no, just with regard to outreach, um, because yeah. I think typically Odin would be here on these calls. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so we're actively recruiting for Odin's position, and uh, we've got candidates in the uh, pipeline. So uh, the hope is that that position is going to be filled uh, sooner than later, and we'll be back up and running at uh, full speed. Um, we do continue to staff the access point at the rescue mission um, on Wednesday mornings. Um, I've made it out a little bit myself, probably about maybe half of Odin's um, turf. <laughs> what, what, what is it, is in his, according to our CUP, and engaged with, you know, several of our, our uh, unhoused people. And uh, no, no enrollments though, and nobody you know, you know, actively wanting services. Thank you, Joel. We will miss Odin on the waterfront, but um, appreciate hearing that, that that's uh, underway and that you were able to go out as well. Yeah. 
Um, can I go to Andrew with code enforcement just to share any updates? Uh, yeah. Um, so beyond the um, Sycamore Creek area, um, we've continued um, patrolling the same sort of areas of the waterfront, um, the Dolphin Fountain area and the beachfront there um, and the promenade. Um, we have seen kind of increased traffic along Montecito Street, um, especially kind of behind the train station there and and um, sort of in conjunction with the Pershing Park area. So um, we are addressing those individuals working closely with with park staff and then also the CAT team on those. Um, but uh, in general, as, as far as in, encampments uh, go, we have we have some seen some improvement um, kind of along the waterfront and also along Sycamore Creek. It just continues to be kind of these these same individuals just utilizing it for sort of daytime or, or evening use that are um, somewhat problematic or something we need to uh, work work on addressing as well. Thanks, Andrew. Um, and then we have Commander Katsapis back with us um, since Commander Corbett has retired. So I just come to hear if you have any updates from your side. Uh, no, no major updates. Um, I, I do agree with Andrew that we've also, as he described, we've heard about some issues that Rich brought up in that general area uh, by Dwight Murphy. And so we'll continue a proactive response here in coordination with code enforcement uh, and the community action team or CAT team as we call them. Um, I think the second update would be that I just got back um, from a security walk throughout the day center with the company that was hired to handle that. And I I'm happy to report back that uh, there are some good measures in place to be good neighbors there and ensure safety and security at that facility. So we're excited about that. Thank you. We appreciate you taking time to meet with them. All right, I'm not seeing any other outreach providers on the call with us right now, but I don't know, Barbara or Liz, if you have anything you wanted to share from your end. Oh, Landon, I, uh, we're here. Oh, okay. Oh, who is this? Uh, this is CityNet, John and Olivia. Yeah, John and Olivia. Oh, nice. Sorry. sorry, we did the uh, dial-in. Okay. <laughs> got it. Got it. No, I appreciate you joining from this field. Yeah. Um, I don't think we have any major updates um, in the waterfront. We've actually noticed kind of fewer people congregating in that, like, West Beach area by the fountain. Um, and... Yeah, we've actually noticed over the course of several months, like far fewer people in the beach area when we go by, we still do outreach over there, maybe like once a week, but um, I don't think we have anything major going on. Olivia, you and John were telling me earlier today that uh, the feedback from businesses on State Street has also been positive lately. Yeah, yeah, um, really positive. Uh, a lot of the business owners have told us that they feel like the issues that they've had have decreased. Luckily, with the the few issues that have come up, we've been able to address and deal with most of them promptly. And um, most of the businesses we, we talk to every night say that they're not having any issues. So it's been really good. I just want to reiterate that I think, you know, the coverage of the CAT team seven days a week, sitting at there seven days a week, the night and weekend team, John and Olivia have been phenomenal. I have heard time and time again, especially from long-term business owners on State Street. I just had a conversation last week with Clay Holdren, which Landon, I think you can remember, was really vocal during our early regional action plan meetings um, that we started post-COVID or in COVID, um, but on the other side. And um, just really wanting to get the word out about the improvements and all of the work across the board, the cleanliness, the safety, um, the, the individuals experiencing homelessness being visibly reduced, um, and that our responses are um, what they need to be and are appropriate to the individuals that, that we're working with. So, you know, I think all of us know we have still, you know, a handful of really, really challenging individuals that we just cannot seem to find the correct agency to, to facilitate a referral, but for the most part, we're, we're able to tackle things quickly and, and people are noticing that and really taking the time and, and getting, you know, I would say stepping out of their way to let us know. Um, so we'd love to find a creative way to elevate those stories and experiences and 
and voices, because um, I know our providers need to hear it, let alone the, the broader community wanting to hear that. Yeah, that's really great to hear. And we're hoping that the day center will just continue to increase that by providing a place for people to go during exactly. the daytime and actually get exactly. easily access all the services they need. So. Um, while we're all together too, just a general announcement. Um, uh, we, we've talked some about the point in time count results. Um, you can actually read the full report that was shared with the uh, County Board of Supervisors. Um, I'm putting the link in the chat window there. Um, but it's really helpful just to see the detail and how it compares year over year. We have talked about on this call that we did see an increase in the numbers in the city of Santa Barbara, um, but also countywide. Um, and that there's a large number uh, or a large part of that is the increases in vehicular homelessness that we've seen. Um, and so thankfully we do have this new uh, uh, huge grant from the state for $9 million for vehicular homelessness specifically that's really going to benefit the city of Santa Barbara as well as the broader county. But um, just encourage you to check that out so we can all be on the same page about all the different things that, that we need to do and that are being done. Yep. And we did just see, uh... I was at a COC presentation just before coming here, but we did look at uh, comparative numbers from other COCs throughout the state. And even though our numbers have gone up, we're still doing significantly better than a lot of the communities around us. So we are definitely doing something right. Uh, so just, uh, it's always good to keep that, that message. Liz, I don't think we've had the chance to update this regional action plan on the grant funding um, to support our population experiencing vehicular homelessness. So yeah. given that we have our most significant increase in terms of the point in time count was related to that, but now we have additional resources. Can you just speak to that for a little bit, especially because Rich from the zoo is here and I think he'll be yeah. happy to hear that we're going to have more resources to help. Yeah, and I missed the conversation earlier about what was going on around the the zoo, so I'm sure I'll get an update. But yeah, we uh, we've been mentioning it uh, a few times, but we're going to council on June 4th to secure. Uh, Sorry, on the 21st, we're going to council to get approval to enter into a grant agreement with the County of Santa Barbara. Uh, the County of Santa Barbara, in partnership with the city, secured uh, an nearly $8 million grant to address vehicular homelessness countywide that uh, includes a good portion of funds set aside for direct outreach and housing funds for uh, the city of Santa Barbara. And we'll be targeting six priority sites, one of them being uh, around the Dwight Murphy area. And I believe that's going to actually be our first target area because we do know uh, that that is a very really high priority area that we want to target. But we'll be contracting with New Beginnings and that goes to council on June 4th to uh, start that program. They're going to be hiring about seven full-time equivalents to do case management, outreach, housing navigation, support services, the whole shebang. Uh, including housing funds. So that's all really exciting to have that going. Uh, we're, we're keeping the priority sites kind of on the down low, uh, but they are known hotspots uh, throughout the city uh, that will be targeting their six sites. Um, and if you've heard me tell you what those sites were, you'd be like, yep, I know that one. Uh, but the one I can say here is uh, the area around Dwight Murphy, uh, and the zoo is, is one of those areas that we'll be working on first. And it's a two year grant. So we'll be uh, we'll be starting that quickly. The state has put in some very strict timelines. 50% uh, of that funding has to be exp expended uh, a year from now. So there's definitely a big push to, to get that program going. And people have to go into interim housing or permanent housing. Those, those are the outcomes that we're trying to achieve. So. I just, I'm really looking forward to seeing visible impact in a very short period of time. Do you know, does either of you know whether New Beginnings has put out um, job descriptions? Or are they yes, they've hiring? posted. They started, yeah. Yeah. They're gonna hire, I think up to 21 people. It's a huge, yeah, yeah a huge expansion for, for New Beginnings. And the bulk of it, it is, is Santa Barbara based because of the population I believe we have a third of the vehicular homeless population countywide. So 
the, the bulk of it is uh, dedicated to Santa Barbara. That's 127 vehicles over those six sites have been included in that grant. So I'm putting the link for um, their hiring page in the chat window, but if anyone knows anyone, please help us to spread the word because that's going to be a, a very quick turnaround to make sure we have the staffing for it. Ooh, raffle prizes. Rich, does that include a, a private tour with the Red Panda? A meet and greet with the Red Panda? <laughs> I'll be buying tickets for that. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think once we know um, kind of what you need, uh, we we can configure some things if it if it'll help kind of generate attendance as well. If it'll help you generate any revenue, uh, we'll, we'll, we're certainly happy to provide some uh, packages. That we we do a package that has uh, parking, admissions, giraffe feeding, a uh, train ride included for four so we can put a couple of those together but we can also do a basket uh, with some plush or we could do the kind of grand prize of a uh, meet and greet with the red panda with the keepers so list thought specifically <laughs> uh, and actually <laughs> yeah, you, you, you should send me a note about that <laughs> I will. That's Raj, my favorite. Raj, Raj is happy to have all the fans he can get in the community. So <laughs> I expect to see that on your form 700 list thoughts. Just letting you know. <laughs> yeah, we value it really low to make sure that it fits. I think it, we we do it at a dollar ninety five or something. Oh, perfect. Per perfect. <laughs> yeah, perfect. That's really generous. Thank you, Rich. I'll definitely follow up with you. Yeah. That so appreciate it, your support of this effort. All right, any other uh, general announcements while we're all together as a group? All right, well, I think we can close the meeting for community members. Um, and then uh, if outreach providers wanna stick around for a minute, I don't think we'll have much to discuss, but we can just yeah. stick around. Thank you all. Thank, thanks, Rich.